Hi everyone. We will now begin with the discussion of the frequency response of single stage MOS amplifier circuits. To first simplify the analysis, I will just assume there is only one large capacitor CL as shown here present, in, present at the output of all the single stage amplifier configurations. Which means we are going to ignore all the other parasitic capacitors of the MOS device. And then finally, we will compare the frequency response characteristics of all the three single stage MOS amplifiers in the presence of this large load capacitor. So first I will very quickly review what we have discussed in the, uh, the low, frequency, low frequency response or the DC response of uh, single stage MOS amplifiers. We discussed that for a common source amplifier, the maximum attainable gain is minus GM or not. And this gain was measured by assuming R is the source resistance as 0 and the load resistance as infinity. So this was called as the unloaded gain. So where there is no loading both on the input side and on the output side. So for a common gate configuration, we said the maximum attainable gain was 1 plus GM or not. And we said that was approximately the same, the magnitude was approximately the same as that of a common source amplifier. The only difference was in the sign. In case of a common source amplifier, the output and input were out of phase with each other. So they are 180 degrees out of phase with each other. Whereas in a common gate configuration, both the input and the output, they were in phase with each other. Which means when you apply a sine wave of zero phase, uh, of zero initial phase, in case of a common gate amplifier, the output will be in, in say in phase, which is, it will also have the zero, uh, the phase, the initial phase will be zero. In case of a common source amplifier, it's going to be 180 degrees. And finally, we also discussed common drain amplifier. And we said the maximum, it, it's normally used as a buffer and the maximum attainable gain is GM or not by 1 plus GM or not. Generally, GM or not is much greater than 1. So this attainable gain is approximately equal to 1. And we said all these three amplifiers or power amplifier, I mean, they amplify power. Uh, so even though common gate amplifier has a uh, common drain amplifier has a gain of just 1, we said that this common drain amplifier doesn't draw any power from the input but it delivers a finite power to the output. So therefore we said there was an infinite power gain. And by that definition, we said this behaves as an amplifier. So now what we will do in this lecture is that we'll assume unloaded conditions, meaning RS is zero and RL is infinity, but we'll assume there is only one capacitor CL present at the output node. And then we'll see what happens to the frequency response or the response or the gain of these single stage MOS amplifiers as a function of frequency. For low frequency response, if you don't, if you assume CL is zero, then we know that the gain, for example, what I've shown here, this is the frequency response plot. It is independent of frequency and it's always the magnitude of the gain remains constant, which is equal to GM or not. Okay, what I've shown here is for a common source amplifier. The frequency response of common source amplifier, then CL is zero. But then when once we start adding a finite CL, when you add a frequency dependent load, the gain will start reducing after a certain frequency. So that's what we will study in this lecture. Before we start discussing the single stage MOS amplifiers, I will discuss some very simple or some basics about first order systems. Shown here is the transfer function of a single pole system. And uh, this is the kind of transfer function we will be getting for all these single stage MOS amplifiers. If you assume just one capacitor at the output. Okay. So this term A0 is what we call the DC gain. So that's the gain at uh, when omega is 0 or S is 0. And omega P is the pole or the 3 dB bandwidth. And there is a third term which we'll be uh, speaking in great detail in this, in this lecture is what we call the gain into bandwidth product. So which is the DC gain times the pole frequency. Okay. And this is a very important parameter when we characterize first order systems. So I'll just uh, discuss about that. So DC gain and pole are something that we are already aware of. The gain bandwidth product is nothing but the product of DC gain times the pole. And if your gain A0 is much greater than 1, then I can also refer this product A0 into omega p as omega u, which is the unity gain frequency. So this is the frequency at which the magnitude response will be equal to 1. So to discuss this, uh, especially the term unity gain bandwidth, which is the product of gain into bandwidth, what is its significance? So I, I just wanted to spend a few minutes on that. 
Now shown here is the frequency response, the magnitude response of the single pole response of this uh, single pole system. So DC gain here is A0 and the moment it encounters the pole omega p the gain starts rolling off with a slope of uh, rolling off with a slope of minus 20 decibels per decade. So what happens at much higher frequencies is that so when your omega is much greater than omega p this term the transfer function reduces to a0 by s by omega p so which is nothing but omega u by s. So at high frequencies it just behaves like an integrator with an integrating frequency equal to omega u. Okay. So what does that tell us? So for example, if I suddenly feed a step input, a sudden change in the input, if I feed a step input to this system and look at what is the response of the system. So since it's a first order system, the response is going to be 1 minus e power minus omega pt times a0. So a0 is the DC gain. So if you feed a step of magnitude 1 at the input, the output will try to eventually steady state value is going to be the DC value of the input times the DC gain, so which is A0 here, A0 times 1 is A0. So the response is going to look, output response is going to look like this. Now what we are interested in is, what is the maximum rate at which the system can raise? What is the maximum slope? Because initially the input starts, the output starts at 0 and eventually it has to catch up to A0. The parameter of interest is that, what is the maximum speed with which the system is going to raise? Okay. Initially, or the output is going to grow initially as a function of time, what is the maximum slope or the maximum speed with which it is going to grow? To find that, we can just, if, I mean, expand e power minus omega t, you know, e power minus x is approximately equal to 1 minus x. Using this expansion, we can easily write this, this function y of t is, can be approximated to a0 omega p into t, so which is nothing but omega u into t. So that's what I've shown here. If you zoom in this region near the origin, you will see that it's increasing as a linear function of time. And that should that should sound intuitive because if you feed a step input to an integrator, a step input, if you recall from the previous lectures I said, can be seen at t equal to zero, it can be seen as a sinusoid of infinite frequency. It's a very, very high frequency sinusoid. Which means at that point at t equal to zero, the system is going to behave like an integrator with an integrating frequency of omega u by omega u. So if when I feed a sudden step input, it's going to behave like a, the output is going to be look like a ramp. Okay. So omega by u by s, if I feed a step input with a unit magnitude to the system, then the output is simply going to be omega u into t. So mind you, this approximation is valid only at t equal to zero when there is a sudden change. So it's like a high frequency response of the system. So that's where this term omega u figures in. The maximum rate at which the system output raises is given by the gain into bandwidth product, which we are calling here it as omega u. So this is the maximum slope with which the output can raise. So that's why this is a very important term. What I've discussed right now is an open loop system. Now let's say I take this single pole system and put it in a feedback, in a feedback loop with a feedback gain of 1, that is the, the feedback path gain is just 1. Now if I try to find the overall transfer function for this system, the overall transfer function is going to look like this, assuming A0 to be much greater than 1, the DC gain will now for this overall closed loop system is going to be A0 by 1 plus A0. And the pole, the new location of the pole is going to be omega p into 1 plus A0. Now for this closed loop system, for this closed loop system, if I try to compute the gain bandwidth product, that will again remain the same. That will again be A0 into omega p, which is a very, very interesting which is a very interesting result. Uh, I'll just quickly discuss the frequency response. If you compare to the open loop response, the gain was really, really large. Okay. The gain was A0 at low frequencies, but now when you close the loop, it's going to be A0 by 1 plus A0. The pole is pushed farther away. So, the pole is pushed farther away. For an open loop system, the pole was at a much lower frequency. But then the interesting parameter, the gain bandwidth product remains the same. So if you take the DC gain times the bandwidth, that product remains the same. And if you noticed, your DC gain reduced by a factor 1 plus A0 and the pole frequency increased by a factor 1 plus A0. So therefore, the product of the two remains the same and that is omega u. 
So similarly for this system as well, if I feed a step input, if I feed a step input even for this closed loop system with a magnitude, I mean with a unit magnitude, 0 to 1 step input, if you look at it very at very high frequencies, again I'll, I'll use this result, at very high frequencies, at this result can be approximated to a0 into omega p by s. At very high frequencies, I can ignore 1 and this becomes this term, the denominator will, you can ignore 1 in the denominator and you can just directly show that you will get this result. So, which is nothing but omega u by s. So, at high frequencies, it is going to behave the same as an open loop system. And that should sound intuitively fine because at very high frequencies, uh, the feedback gain is so less that there is nothing feed feedback. You can assume most of the input will now appear across the system itself. So previously only an error function was appearing wherein input minus the feedback quantity was appearing across the input of this uh, open loop system. But now since there is no feedback, most of because your feedback, the gain of this forward path is so, so small that you can assume that none of it has actually fed back. So which means most of your x of t will appear across the input. So it is going to behave like an open loop system itself. Okay. So now if I feed a step input for this system, of course the DC value that this system will reach will be A0 by 1 plus A0. Okay. But at the origin, the slope, maximum slope at which is, this is going to raise will again be just omega u into t. I mean the maximum rate at which it is going to raise, will see the function will be look like a linear function. The slope of that will be just omega u itself. So even for a closed loop system, the maximum rate at which this can raise is simply equal to the product of gain into bandwidth. So again, mind you, this is as the result derived by assuming beta is 1. So that's why this is a very important parameter. So we are going to try to find the DC gain. We already know from the low frequency analysis, low frequency response analysis. And we also know how to find poles for the single stage MOS amplifiers. We have discussed how to find poles and zeros in the previous two lectures. So using that, we will very quickly compare the frequency response plots of all the three single stage MOS amplified circuits. And also we will compare this product omega u for all the three MOS amplifiers. So first I will start with the standard common source amplifier with just one capacitor Cl. Now the gain of this, I will club R0 into Cl and then call it as ZL where your ZL is actually R0 in parallel with 1 by SCL. So it will the ZL is simply an equivalent impedance of R0 and a capacitor CL in parallel with it. So to find the pole, I just have to find the frequency at which the overall impedance blows up to infinity. So the frequency at which your gain becoming infinity is the same as the frequency at which or the value of S at which ZL becomes infinity and that will simply be equal to minus 1 by R0 CL. So when R0 becomes our 1 by when R0 becomes equal to minus of 1 by SCL, you are going to have a pole. So we know the pole now. And this system, does it have a 0? Yes, it has a 0, but that happens only when your ZL, the output impedance becomes 0, and that happens only at infinite frequency. When omega is infinity, then the capacitive impedance, the load capacitance impedance becomes 0. So which means there is no finite 0 in the circuit. So since it is a single capacitor system, you can expect at max 1 pole and 1 0. Since there is no 0 and it has only one pole, so we can now write the transfer function. The transfer function will first we write the DC gain and the pole. So DC gain for a common source amplifier is minus GM or not. So you have the transfer function is minus GM or not by 1 plus SCL or not. So yes, when I write it in S, I usually keep the sign in mind because once you write it in S, you have to because your pole is in an S plane. So there the sign matters. But when you write it in terms of omega p, that is in radians per second, so you don't really need to mention the sign there. So it will be just 1 by R0 Cl. So in an S plane, the pole is going to be located at minus omega p. Okay. So quickly when we look at the frequency response, the gain, the DC, uh, this is the magnitude response. So the gain is, maximum gain is going to be gm R0 at DC. And after it encounters the pole, which is 1 by R0 Cl, the gain is going to reduce with a slope of 20 decibels per decade. Eventually, it is going to become less than 1 and the point where it becomes equal to 1 
which will coincide with the product of DC gain times pole we just discussed for a general single pole system that term happens to be GM R naught times 1 by CL R naught so which is GM by CL so the unity gain bandwidth or the gain bandwidth product for a single stage common source amplifier is GM by CL okay So I have summarized the three parameters for a common source amplifier here. So this is the transfer function showing the DC gain and the pole here which is 1 by R0 CL and the gain into bandwidth product so which is mod of A0 into omega P here I have taken magnitude of the gain uh, because the gain is negative here we have to take the magnitude which will simply be GM by CL. So next we will start with common gate amplifiers. So for a common gate amplifier again uh, we are going to assume there is only R0 here. Uh, so I have also discussed how to find poles for this and all that. But we can very quickly since we have done this analysis extensively in for, for low frequencies. So we can directly represent the Thevenin equivalent of the common gate amplifier without the load capacitor. So as far as the load capacitor is considered it is going to see the common gate amplifier as a voltage dependent voltage source of value 1 plus GMR0 into A and 1 plus GMR0 is the maximum attainable gain in a common gate configuration okay and the output resistance of a common gate configuration which is measured by shorting the input will simply be R0. So now if you see this circuit it looks like an RC circuit you know first order RC low pass filter you can directly write the transfer function okay or we can just use the techniques we discussed in the previous lectures. Um, the pole will occur when the output impedance blows up to infinity. So, ZL parallel Z out blows up to infinity. So, that is the point where you will have a pole. From that, you can directly write the pole as 1 by SCL equals minus R0. From this condition, you get the pole. Okay. How do we measure that condition ZL, uh, ZL parallel Z out? I mean, you just short circuit the input and try to find a condition where your output impedance blows up to infinity. So we can, I mean, there are different ways of writing it, but I have discussed all that in the previous lecture. So I am going to directly go to the final result. So the DC gain is 1 plus GMR0 and the pole is going to be at 1 by R0 CL. So when you write the transfer function, you write it as A0 plus 1 plus S by omega P. So when I substitute omega P as 1 by R0 CL, you get this. So the expression looks very similar to a common source amplifier except that there is no minus sign here. So when you plot its frequency response, uh, there is a 1 plus GMR0 here, but generally GMR0 is much greater than 1, so I can ignore that. And its magnitude response is going to look very similar to a common source amplifier. Okay, The pole is at 1 by R0 CL and the gain is going to reduce with a slope of 20 decibels per decade after that. And the unity gain frequency or the gain into bandwidth product will simply be GM by CL. Now if you notice this it is similar to common source amplifier and that should not be surprising because the DC gain is same approximately the same and pole is also the same. So the product of DC gain times pole which is your unity gain bandwidth should also remain the same. So I have summarized all these results here. So the first line here shows the transfer function. The second line here shows the gain DC gain and the pole and the third line here shows the gain bandwidth product which is GM by CL for a common gate amplifier. So finally we will start with the discussion of common drain amplifiers. So for a common drain amplifier again uh, to simplify the circuit what I will do is I will represent this part of the common drain amplifier as seen by the load capacitance it is going to look like a DC voltage source of value GM R0 by 1 plus GM R0 times VI. And output impedance is 1 by GM parallel or not. See, I could have even represented the same thing uh, using uh, uh, the not on equivalent model, but both of them will give you the same results. So, this is directly, uh, I can just directly write this because it looks like a simple first order low pass filter. So, I can directly write the transfer function here. So, DC gain is GM or not by 1 plus GM or not times 1 by 1 plus S. The pole location is simply given by CL times R out. Okay, this is a first order RC circuit so you can directly write it from that or you can compute the pole uh, using the methods we discussed in the previous lecture. 
again uh, to quickly recall there is no zero in the circuit because uh, the zero at the out, I mean output voltage going to zero happens only if your load capacitance is zero and that happens at infinite frequencies so there is no finite zero so it has only one pole again the gain into bandwidth product so dc gain is gm or not by 1 plus gm or not the pole if you see the pole is actually 1 by cl so the pole um, let me write it here so it is 1 by cl into r not parallel 1 by gm so if i write this expression you will actually get 1 plus gm r not so your resistance is much smaller here uh, the resistance seen by the load capacitance is much smaller so which is why your pole is going to be at a higher frequency in case of common drain and so called common gate and common source amplifiers the output resistance was r not and in case of a common gate amplifier it is actually r not by 1 plus gm r not so it reduces by a factor of 1 plus gm r not so your pole increases by a factor of 1 plus gm r not and if you observe this you can notice a very interesting result that the dc gain actually reduces by the same factor so your dc gain becomes gm r not by 1 plus gm r not but your pole has increased by the factor of 1 plus gm r not so therefore the product the gain into bandwidth product is going to remain the same so that will be gm by cl so if you compare it with a common gate or a common source configuration the dc gain is reduced the magnitude of the dc gain has reduced by 1 plus gm or not but the pole has increased by 1 plus gm or not so the product will remain the same so uh, there is other interesting way of looking at a common uh, source configuration common drain configuration so i just wanted to discuss it very briefly here so a common drain amplifier can also be seen as a feedback amplifier so what is this mos device doing your input voltage minus the output voltage so there is some kind of feedback so your input voltage minus the output voltage v naught this is your vgs times gm is your output current that current flows into a par parallel resistance of this is r naught parallel 1 by scl so you get r naught by 1 plus scl r naught you get your voltage v naught and your and your feedback is complete okay now for this if you see the open loop transfer function is gm r naught by 1 plus s cl r naught so that's your open loop transfer function so as we discussed in the in the beginning uh, when we introduced this uh, single pole a general single pole transfer function we said we compared it to this to 1 plus a naught by 1 plus s by omega p and we said that when you put it in feedback the dc gain was reducing by a factor of 1 plus a naught and the pole was increasing by a factor of 1 plus a naught so the same thing is happening here so when you actually try to work out the closed loop equations your transfer function is going to be i mean the dc gain is going to be gm or not by 1 plus gm or not and your pole is now going to move to a higher frequency given by 1 plus s cl or not by 1 plus gm or not so your pole is actually going to move to a higher frequency So uh, that's this is just a different way of looking at a common drain amplifier. So I just wanted to discuss it for a few, uh, very very briefly. So now if I draw the frequency response plot, uh, this is very much going to look like what we discussed previously, which is uh, for a for a general open loop. I mean for a general open loop versus closed loop transfer function for a first order system. So you can see your DC gain has reduced. It has become GMR not by one plus GMR not. Okay. And the pole has increased by a factor of 1 plus gm or not but the product remains the same and mind you the dc gain is actually approximately one in fact it's slightly less than one okay and this term after the frequency which is actually if you if you look at this term this frequency will actually occurs slightly before um, so this term if you see this is actually this I, I can write this term as gm plus 1 by r naught by cl and if you compare your uh, unity gain bandwidth that is actually at gm by cl so if you see that term this this gm by cl actually occurs slightly before that the frequency is slightly before the pole itself but that the difference is very very small 
okay but the product that is when you multiply the dc gain times the pole it remains the same and that is gm by cl now very quickly i'll compare the three the responses of uh, the three uh, single stage amplifier configurations shown in yellow here is the frequency response of both common source and common gate approximately we said the dc gains are the same and the poles are also shown that's what is shown in yellow here okay and the pole for both these systems is 1 by r not cl but for a common drain configuration the dc gain has reduced significantly it has reduced by 1 but the pole has moved by the same factor increased by the same factor so this is increased by 1 plus gm r not which i said see gm plus 1 by r not by cl i have approximated it to gm by cl and if you notice uh, an interesting result that your unity gain bandwidth is approximately a naught times omega p so it is intrinsic gain times omega p so your omega u is a naught times omega p so it's actually intrinsic gain times omega p so gain i can say has reduced by a naught so that's why gain has become one and the pole has increased by a naught so it has become equal to omega u itself so at very high frequencies all the three amplifiers will have similar frequency response the frequency response major difference comes at the lower frequencies again so you have to be very clear here your rs is zero in all the three cases and rl i have assumed to be infinity so at a later lecture i will we'll include these two and see how does the responses change so finally to conclude what does this lecture tell us is that the unity gain band the gain into bandwidth product for all the three mos amplifier configurations if your load capacitance happens to be the largest capacitance it's much higher than your parasitic capacitors then we can say the unity gain bandwidth is same for all the three amplifier configurations it is independent of the configuration that the single stage amplifier configuration we are going to pick the pole locations will be different though for a common source amplifier and a common gate amplifier the pole locations will be at 1 by r naught cl and for a common drain amplifier the pole location is at a much higher frequency it will be a naught times higher so that's what i've written it here the poles of common source and common gate is 1 by a naught times the pole of a common drain configuration where a naught here is the intrinsic gain which is gm into r naught okay so uh, that's it about the single stage mos amplifier configurations the frequency response of single stage mos amplifier configurations the next lecture i'll discuss uh, cascode amplifiers and then we will move on to more a more rigorous analysis of the frequency response of uh, single stage mos amplifiers